friends, welcome to this week's video. Today we are looking at something from Koss. They have like a trifecta of products that everyone loves from the KPH30i to the KSC75s or the Porter Pros. They've introduced a fourth option, so now I guess it's like a Koss square of some sort. But these guys I've been waiting for for a very long time, except they just didn't come out with this beige colorway. Again, enough black tech in my life, so like wanted a different colorway that was more of a vibe. So finally came out earlier this year. Didn't really have time to review it until now. So let's get into these because this is supposed to be very promising and a lot of people are converting to this. So let's check out this and the specs first. The KPH40 utility has been out for a while, but this colorway is the one I've been waiting for. I think it looks great with this metal construction, and I hope that these can be a slimmed down version of the KPH30Is, which are my current favorite of the Koss on-ear offerings so far. While upon initial look, the drivers look bigger than the Porta Pros, peeling back the foam, they're the same 35mm driver. The foam seems to be attributing to that extra size, which is probably ideal for this simplistic setup. The headband is in all metal construction and feels nice in hand. The headband is really flexible and does a good job of snapping back to original shape. The connection to the ear cups also give the cups a good range for articulation so that it can fit to your ear angle, making it super comfortable. In terms of the adjustability sliders, they are metal on metal, but they slide extremely easy. There's no notches, so you have free form to adjust this to however you like, but I just do appreciate how smooth the operation is on this. Even when on head, they're very easy to move around. There's no big fuss there. And I do like the fact that it doesn't snag my hair like maybe like the Porter Pros would. It's just extremely well-designed and really unfussy. And on that unfussiness is, while it does have that free floater, I don't notice it moving around in terms of like readjusting itself. So I don't have to readjust my headset whether I'm running errands or just going to the office. I notice that it pretty much sticks where the settings I have. And that's really good because I don't like fussing with my headphones all the time to make sure it's in the right place. The thing that I would want to make sure that people like is for bald people or people with less hair is if this metal headband would be comfortable for you because it doesn't have any padding. I'm not sure if that would aggravate your skin or not, but if you have hair or if you're wearing a hat with it, these are extremely comfortable just because they're so lightweight and you really don't feel them on your head. Another thing about this is, yes, it's flexible. I usually... Um, widen these out a bit just so I can get a little bit less ear pressure. But if I'm, you know, running around with it, uh, I want them to be a little bit tighter in, I'll bring them in, but I'm almost maxed out. I probably use most of the space here, but if you are a larger head person, it does have some flexibility. So, you know, if you're, you have a wider head, it should allow you to wear these. However, you might have issues with clamping pressure uh, because it does max out. There's not a, like, a ton of space there for bigger heads so just something you want to try out to make sure it's a fit for you but overall the headband is inconspicuous super lightweight and i think a lot of people will find it comfortable another cool trick on this headband is that you can pull off the ear pads and use the porta pro or ksc 75 ear pads instead this gives you the ability to bring the kcs 75 sound to a lightweight headband or use the kph 40 drivers on an ear clip design if you want a bandless experience it's really cool that you can switch up your load up to your preferences Lately, I've been finding myself using this more for conference due to the comfort. It doesn't overheat my ears like my over-ear headphones, and the low weight makes it unnoticeable on my head, which really gives it that all-day comfort. My friends agree as well. Here's what my friend Evie's had to say about the feel. How should they feel? I don't know. Feel retro, which is very trendy right now, I guess. That's comfortable. What's this? It's for the cable. But this is not like, this is not a, like, this, you have to be plugged. Yeah, it's not wireless. It's ret it's actually retro. Oh, it is retro. I think it's retro on purpose. It should be trendy with the new generation. Oh, but they're comfortable. Okay. You think you could like do all day with it? Yeah, especially for work. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. They don't move. <laughs> do you feel them with all your hair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think the sound would go through, even though all my hair is here. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Why is it red and blue? It's left and right. 
That's how retro it is. That's how they used to tell you left and right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the cable, this is where the utility aspect comes through. The KPH40 is using a nice flat cabling system which resists tangles better and allows the cable to drape nicely from the ear pads. The utility series has a detachable section that allows you to swap cables for your needs. The KPH40s come with a 30.5mm connector, but you can buy a USB-C or lightning cable for 45 bucks. Definitely a little bit pricey, but some may prefer this to a dongle. I do like having the ability to have detachable cables for my analog sources like my laptop and camera, but I definitely use the USB-C for my phone just because it's sleeker. These headphones are 60 ohms and technically could sound better with amplification, but I didn't notice any lack of power driving from my phone and laptop, so I think you should be fine for general listening. The USB-C and lightning cables also have microphone attached which give you playback and volume controls for your device. This works both for mobile devices and computers which is a nice convenience especially for conferencing. The microphone placement is a little low due to the cable design and you will get better sound by holding the microphone to your mouth. When I wanted a hands-free experience, I kind of looped the module around my ear and that was sort of a jank workaround. I would love them to add this to the main cable in the future, but maybe this is just to keep the base model of the KPH40 into a cheaper price range. For now, let's switch over to the outdoor sample of the microphone so you guys can hear this for yourself. So we're outdoors, here's the microphone. There's some construction going on, so my bad. But uh, yeah, just in natural, sort of a use of this. This is how the microphones would sound. Again, you can always bring this up to your face and get a little bit of better option in terms of clarity and loudness and proximity. So and likely you'll have to do this because sometimes putting it below, it just won't sound as good. But overall, I think the microphones are pretty commendable. Again, the direct to USB connection is very convenient and I like it overall. I think there are other microphones from Koss that do a little bit better job especially like the KC-75s um, or KSC-75s, which do a little bit better. But overall, serviceable for sure. In terms of the headphones themselves, they do well like outdoor. The ambient noise is obviously great. You can probably hear all this stuff. But I will say that you need to be at like 60 to 80% for you to really block out your surroundings. And obviously at the 70 80% with an open ear headphone, other people are going to hear your music. So if you're on a subway and wanted to zap things out that's great however everyone's gonna know what you're rocking so just keep that in mind as you think about using these in public in your everyday life and commuting and all that sort of stuff but we're outdoors anyway so let's see how these work in the field from a workout perspective you need to consider if you can go with the regular cable or if you need the mic module for playback controls while for lifting it's probably not a big issue the module becomes problematic when running or doing more dynamic cardio activities as the module really adds weight to the cable this causes the cable to fly around more and will smack you on your chest repeatedly so if you want playback controls i'd suggest wearing a shirt to ensure that you can snake the cable underneath and keep that cable in control Otherwise, I'd suggest using the 3.5 millimeter cable just so you don't have those issues. Aside from the cable, the headphones hold up really well for a workout. The lightweight makes it comfortable and unbothersome during runs. The headband doesn't snag and maintains headband sizing even through sprints and agility drills. And the clamp was perfect by allowing my ears to breathe, but also stayed secure on my ears without me having to second guess the fit. In terms of volume, these headphones require higher volumes if you want to zone out your surroundings. But for me, I generally like having situational awareness. So I'm usually rocking these around 60% volume for workouts. Also note that higher volumes will leak sound due to the open back nature, but nothing that I've had anyone complain about. Overall, these are definitely solid for working out if you prefer wired lightweight setups. So heading into sound, there's a lot more quirks than I was expecting to happen here. In reality, I was expecting that all these cables would just be a connection point and there would not be a tone difference. However, there are some unique characteristics in terms of balance and what gets emphasized based on what connection you're using. For disclaimer, the USB-C has a 24-bit DAC in it, the 3.5 does nothing, and then I'm not sure about the lightning cable, it didn't say anything about a DAC in the specifications, and I didn't buy it because I don't have an iPhone, so I wasn't able to test that anyway. However, there is, for at least for this review, I'm going to be comparing the 3.5 and the USB-C. From what I can tell, this has an actual like significant change into it depending on how you want to connect to your device. If you use the three and a half, generally it'll sound a lot like a Porter Pro um, in terms of how that thing is balanced. However, you, once you start using the USB-C, you'll be noticing a lot more bass and that will be 
detrimental or beneficial depending on what kind of song you listen to. So an example here is if you're listening to something a little bit more airy, people who are using falsettos more with a strong bass line, there's a chance that bass line may actually overpower the vocalist and their voice won't be able to shine or sparkle like it would normally on the song. So songs like Preta Reña as well as Napa by Crush, those people are using a lot of falsettos. They're using softer tones and they just don't overpower the, the instruments. So that bass line will just come in and make them sound a little bit washed, a little bit more feeble, which that's when I needed to just go to the three and a half and that was a little bit better representation of, of a balance that you'd need for those songs. However, once you start going to more dancey songs, then those end up being a little bit more fun because the, the added bass just adds on to it and there's just a boost in the vocals. Especially if your vocalist is a deeper voice person or just a strong singer in general, then it'll come through regardless. So an example of this is Own It by Stormzy's and Ed Sheeran. Stormzy's has a relaxed voice, really relaxed tone, but it's really deep. So the bass doesn't really overpower him. And then Ed Sheeran just comes in and sings very strongly anyway, has a really good presence. So the bass does not like make him any lesser. He's able to combat with that well, even on the USB. So I actually like that song with the USB-C better. Um, again, that was also with working, out, working for the weekend with Max. Again, the energy of that song is just much appreciated on the USB-C because it just brings in that bass in the mids a little bit more. That makes it a little bit more fun to listen to. His vocals aren't as important as in some other songs, but, it, but he's able to stay balanced on that and I can still understand what's going on in the song. Um, and then lastly, the other scenario where the USB-C works really well is if it's more, you know, no bass or if it's just like an acoustic render. Um, so Tricker made a, a remix or salsa remix of Kickback, which would be a cover from the Chainsaw Man song. This is, it's very salsa music, so it, it doesn't have a strong bass line. There it is present there, but it actually brought more clarity into his voice with the USB-C over the three and a half. They both sound good, but the USB-C is just doing a lot better and bringing forward his voice and making it sound a lot cleaner. So I like it in that. And then Rainbow Kitten Surprise, black and white, just completely different on the USB-C. Just a lot of haunting nature to their harmonies, as well as just sticking power that gave you chills. And while it did still sound good on the three and a half, it didn't sound as good as the USB-C, so I have to give it to that. So those are the characteristics you should know between the two. Obviously, I can't show you guys this copyrighted music, but I will give you renders of copyright free music from Chill Hop so that you guys can get a sense of what this sounds like. And I'll even add some differences between the USB-C and the three and a half so you guys can get that understanding as well. Hopefully it comes through, but let's check it out.
So I hope you guys have a good understanding of what the KVH 40s have to offer and to understand if these are good for you. From my personal perspective, these are a great option, especially if you're looking for something a little bit more lightweight, less fussy, with some adaptability with the different cables. However, what you might not like is the fact that they're a little bit less beefy and they do have a little bit of slight signature changes from what you have in the KPH 30i's. Uh, so it just really depends if the signature is good for you. As well as with this cable, not great for working out as we looked at before, just a little bit heavier than you'd want. So like any of the other cost headphones are a little bit better for working out just because it's a little bit less weight there. So it won't hit you in your chest and all that sort of stuff when you're running and doing more agility based workouts. But I can't really complain about this. And there's plenty of adaptability if you like this sound signature and want to use a different headband. Like we talked about, you can throw these on the KSC 75s. You can throw these under the Porter Pro. So there's some flexibility if you like the signature over what, you, what the other ones have. Again, if you like the headband, you can do some sweep arounds for that too. And I'll probably do a video sort of talking about how adaptable and how to pick the fit and sound for you. But overall, the KPH 40s are a great introduction to the line and definitely something that you guys should check out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. But as always, always appreciate you guys. If you could leave like, comment, subscribe, do all things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. And I'll see you very soon. Peace.